Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, respected Director, uh, Dean Academics, uh, faculty, residents, nursing officers, and my dear friends. It is an it is my pleasure and honor to invite you for your guest lecture by Dr. Rajesh Puri. Dr. Rajesh Puri is a director of Institute of Digestive and Hepatobiliary Sciences, Medanta. He did his undergraduation and postgraduation from Jodhpur, Rajasthan. And then he did his DNP gastroenterology from uh, Sir Gangara Hospital. Sir has been a pioneer of endoscopic ultrasound in North India. And currently he is a secretary general of uh, Society of Gastroenterology and Endoscopy of India. Uh, sir is an uh, excellent teacher which we have seen since morning. He has been teaching our faculty and senior residents how to do this procedure which is called as per oral endoscopic myotomy. Uh, Dr. Puri, it is my honor to welcome you to AIMS Uh Ma'am, uh, Director, I request you to felicitate Dr. Puri with a bouquet of flour and I request uh, Dr. Puri to give his talk on what is new in endoscopy. Thank you, Dr. Puri. Which one is this? Yes. Yes. So, would like to extend my thanks to. Professor Menu Singh, Director of AIMS Rishikis. Thanks to Professor Jaya Chaturvedi, Dean Academics AIMS, dear friend Rohit. And to be very frank, I would like to tell this is from core of my heart. There's a different culture in the AIMS, and which I have seen across all the branches of AIMS, not only in Delhi, but in Rishikis, in Jodhpur, and other. When I met Dr. Rohit and he was so humbled to give the cream and the premier procedure of which everybody wants to take the endoscope in his hand. But he says that it's better one of my colleagues to develop the expertise. I'm already dedicating myself to the liver. So living or giving I think is the biggest courage of an individual which very few people have. We, I have come across with the most of the institute in India or even the world also where the people don't want to give the things what they have learned unless until they have reached to a very bigger height. But giving to your colleague when you are not the master of that field I think that requires a very big heart and I am really thankful to Rohit for this and that has given an immense it is a way has improved immensely. We were talking on the phone, we met on the conferences, but today when I met him and it gave me a lot of confidence that he is a person who is a team leader, who can build up the team, I think that is important. With that I would like to talk what is new in endoscopy. Why I chosen this area because in the last one decade, there is a significant ad advancement in the field of endoscopy. I am very sure Jaya Madam or Minu Madam must have seen endoscopy that is white light endoscopy, upper GI colon or maybe an ERCD. Because around 15 years before these are the three procedures and in the last 10 years there is a boom and I will say there is a paradigm shift in the field of endoscopy and I am going to give you because each field has its own series of lectures and it is difficult to cover in 30 to 40 minutes. So I will give you brief glimpses of what is new in endoscopy, at least you should be aware. You can benefit your patient if you know about the modality. 
so the advancement has happened in the form of ability to see better earlier there is a white light endoscopy but now we have a magnification up to the tune of 560 560 hundred times it was 120 times 260 times and now we have a 528 time so we can give the histopathological diagnosis with the help of endoscope this type of endoscope is available ability to visualize the area which was inaccessible earlier the small intestine you look at the ct you look at the barium you say this is could be a malignancy this could be a tuberculosis this could be a crohn's disease and you give the trial of att but now we have an endoscope which can go to the convoluted small intestine which is 8 meters long we can start from the mouth and we can reach up to the transverse colon the entire small intestine can be seen with the help of endoscope so in the evidence based medicine era we don't rely only on the ct scan we can reach to the terminal ileum we can take the biopsies we can do the therapeutic procedures the bile duct the pancreatic duct we can go inside the bile duct, we can visualize like an endoscopy. So this, this much of advancement has happened. We can see outside the gut wall. Because with an endoscope, we can see inside the lumen. But we have an endoscopic ultrasound, we can look at the gut wall, we can see outside the gut wall, and we can take the biopsies, we can do the therapeutic procedure, and few innovative technology. So to see greater mucosal detail, I am very sure everybody has seen this white light endoscopic image, but now we have such an advancement. And what is an advancement? A greater evaluation of the surface pattern and the greater evaluation of the vascular pattern. So as the normal mucosa goes towards the cancer, the vessels pattern start changing. The mucosa surface pattern start changing and we have a zoom scope we can see the abnormal blood vessels here and we can see you can see a normal pattern of the surface pattern and the normal blood vessel pattern but as you advance the blood vessels started become disarray the surface become amorphous and we can diagnose that are we dealing with the cancer are we dealing with the inflammation and not only we are dealing with the cancer how depth is the involvement of the cancer we can predict on the basis of surface and the vascular pattern is this cancer is limited to the mucosa is it limited to the submucosa or has gone to the muscular propria because this disease can we treat this cancer endoscopically or this patient should be subjected to surgery this disease we can take on table while doing endoscopy because we are moving towards the minimally invasive surgery so the cancer which is limited to some mucosa we can remove endoscopically we can give the cure rate up to the tune of 97 percent that is called as early esophageal cancer early gastric cancer early cancer in the rectum we can treat endoscopically and it has a cure rate of 97 and if you know earlier if anybody has a cancer everybody says his life is not more than six months or one year but now when we visit Japan, we visit US or UK, a patient has a one cancer in 1993, circuit cancer in 2005, and third cancer in 2019. All three times he was treated endoscopically because we have a better detection. We have a better, when you detect early, you can give a cure because once the disease is advanced, you cannot treat it. Now, this is an advancement which I was talking. We can do the histopathological examination. We just contact and you can see if any pathologist is sitting, we can see the villus and the nuclear pattern, presence of the nucleolus, enlargement of the nuclei, there's a disarray and these things indicate are you dealing with the adenomatous polyp, are you dealing with the hyperplastic polyp, are you dealing with the malignancy. So with the help of endoscopy we can do the histopathological diagnosis. I'm not going into the detail what is an advantage, if a hyperplastic polyp you can leave it no point in resecting, no point in sending to the histopathology because there's a two, two places. One is when you resect, 
your finance is involved when you send for the histopathology the finance is involved but with the endoscope you say it is a hyperplastic polyp you leave it you don't require to do the resection these are the advantage of this now the ability to see the inaccessible area and what are the inaccessible area is a small bowel bile duct and the pancreatic duct in the small bowel we have a capsule endoscopy and balloon assisted endoscopy and now we have a motorized spiral endoscopy by that we have a polydocoscopy and the pancreatoscopy which i'm going to talk so this is a double balloon endoscope meaning that on endoscope there is a over tube and which has a two balloon so it pleat the sub a small intestine over the endoscope and you can go at least 2 to 3 meters inside so you go by the mouth you go by the rectum and you can do the pan gi endoscopy but the disadvantage with this has been seen that the channel is not wide so therapeutic procedure is sometimes difficult you can take biopsies you can inject but you cannot do the most of the therapeutic procedure so this is a anterior grade route and this is a retrograde route and you can do the pan gi endoscopy but this is a recent advancement what is motorized spiral endoscope and this is a motor here the work is done by the motor not by the doctor you just go to the proximal distal duodenum or d3 d4 duodenal flexure and then you press the power button and the scope will move of its own there is no manual work required by the doctor and this motorized scope sorry this motorized scope reach to the ileum within 35 to 40 minutes if i start my endoscopy within 40 minutes i can reach to the ileocecal junction so any patient of the small bowel bleed any patient who has ulcers or strictures or anemia of unknown origin we can do spiral and i think this is a very good armamentarium and i my feeling is the department which is hugely run we doing so much of therapeutic procedure i'm not very sure you have it or not but this is a very value addition a patient who comes with a small bowel bleed i think that is a very therapeutic beneficial advantage of this spiral endoscope so less time consume not work by the doctors it is a machine who is to work you just have to take the scope up to the dj flexure and after that you press the pedal and the scope will move of its own and it reach the ileocecal junction within 40 minutes and these are the few photographs you can see the colon you see the ileocecal valve and our scope has gone and that take around 35 to 40 the advantage is the lumen is wide you can do the stricture dilatation because patient of tuberculosis patient of crohn's disease where the post treatment there is a stricture development patient goes to the repeated subacute obstruction now there is the stricture small you can do the balloon dilatation you can do polypectomies if patient has a gi bleed you can apply the clips you can apply the endo loops so it has a true therapeutic advantage that is spiral spiral motorized endoscope so this is a bleeding polyp in the small intestine which can be removed with the help of motorized spiral scope the cholangioscope what is cholangioscope is 10 mm 10 french scope which has a four channels two for irrigation one for the biopsy one for the laser and second in the legacy system there was a camera now there is a inbuilt camera this attach on the duodenoscope and you can take this scope inside the bile duct and look at here this patient if you look at here this patient presented with the hemobilia this patient presented with the indeterminate biliary stricture you take multiple biopsy it is negative but you can see a tumor you can do the targeted biopsy this patient presented with the hemobilia with the two ct angio was normal and he himself was a doctor we did a cholangioscopy at the origin of the left intrahepatic duct there is a small growth and patient was bleeding from here this patient for underwent the left hepatectomy and that is going to give the cure so in determinate biliary structures you take multiple biopsy you have only two options either you tell the patient to go for a surgical resection which has a morbidity and mortality up to the tune of 25 to 30% and if you cannot document it is a cancer you cannot give the radio chemotherapy to these patients 
and these patients left untreated. So if you have a cholangioscope, you can go inside the bile duct, you can find out. Another important advantage of this is, look at here, earlier surgical pulley, the stone which is more than 2 cm, we used to send the patient to the surgical pulley. But now, any stone of any size, stone of any size, 2 cm, 2.5 cm, 2.5 cm, in fact, when the surgical pulley leave the stone as a mini syndrome, they did a polycystectomy, but the stone impacted at the neck of the cystic duct. They, 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 sometimes they may not be able to remove, and post-surgery patient comes to us. In the last four years, we have done 70 cases of Mirizzi syndrome. You do a laser lithotripsy, you break these stones, you pulverize these stones into the small particles. So any stone of more than 2 cm, 3 cm, 4 cm, they don't require to go. Look at the CBD is packed with the large stones. Earlier these patients go for a CBD exploration, but now with the help of cholangioscope, we can remove. And it gives a very good picture of the bile duct. This is the new version of the spy scope, which has a CMOS chip. This is a camera. These are the irrigation channel, and this is the device channel through which you can take the biopsies or you can take the laser lithotripsy. Another advancement is the capsule endoscope. What is capsule? This is a 22 millimeter size capsule which has an inbuilt camera. Person has to swallow with the water and it takes around 60,000 photographs over a period of 8 hours. It has a data recorder, it takes capsule and it, the images are recorded in the data recorder. Once the capsule cover 8 hours reaches to the small, small intestine to large intestine, then you remove the data recorder, you download on the computer and within one hour you can look at. So those patients who cannot go for the difficult endroscopy because they have a multiple cardiopulmonary disease, they are not the good candidate for the anesthesia. In these patients, you can do the capsule endoscopy, you can figure out what disease are you dealing So advantage of capsule is, it is a non-invasive painless procedure, high quality of image, ambulatory examination, even possible even the frail patients who cannot tolerate endoscopy, it does not require any anesthesia and it gives around 60,000 photographs of the small intestine. So you can locate the disease and these are the few examples in the form of lymphoma, mass, polyp, gist. You may find the inflammatory polyp, you find the Crohn's, Crohn's ileitis or the linear ulcer, which can very well see. But I think with the help of spiral motorized endroscopy, the uses of capsule has gone down. The area which I was talking, which you cannot see inside the human see but you cannot see the wall of the gut you cannot see the outside the wall so this is an endoscopic ultrasound this is the gut wall you can see outside the gut wall so endoscopic ultrasound is another advantage and what is the advantage i'm very sure in mbbs days we have seen the gut wall is consist of five layers so neither a ct scan nor the pet scan or mri can give the detailed evaluation of these five layers Endoscopic ultrasound is the only modality which gives the five layer structure of the gut wall. And what is the importance? When you detect an early cancer, is it a T1, is it a T2 or is it a T3? You can do with the help of endoscopic ultrasound and that is going to decide is this patient can be taken up for the endoscopy, is this patient can be taken up directly for surgery or is this patient require a new adjuvant? chemotherapy. Second advantage is some epithelial lesion. We have seen in endoscopy there is a bulge in the gastric antrum and the mucosa is normal. A 2 cm lesion approximately. You don't know what is the cause. There is a hundred of the causes. It may be extramural, it may be intramural, but if you do an endoscopic <coughs> ultrasound you can say are you dealing with the lipoma, are you dealing with the varix, are you dealing with the gist. And why it is important? If it is a lipoma, you can tell the patient you don't require anything, go home. But if patient has a varix, and if you take the biopsy, patient originally bleed and dies on the table. And if the patient has a gist, then you can plan, can I remove it endoscopically or should I subject the patient for the surgery because gist is a malignant potential. 
So this is an advantage of endoscopic ultrasound, T-staging of the tumor, the, which, which layer the tumor is originating or the lesion is originating, you can predict, are you dealing with a neuroendocrine tumor, schwannoma, lipoma, neurofibroma, or the gist or the leomyoma and you can plan your treatment accordingly. So this is a US machine, this is a US scope. The most important role of endoscopic ultrasound is staging of the lung cancer. But in our country, the pyrexia of unknown origin with the media external and the intra-abdominal lymphadenopathy. I'm very sure we, when we were doing postgraduate, any patient comes with the media external lymphadenopathy. You have only two options. Either do a bronchoscopy, which has a pickup rate of only 27%, or give an empirical UTT. And it has been shown in the series that 17% of the patients are not tuberculosis, either they are sarcoidosis or they are lymphoma, and patients unnecessarily take the ATT. And on the other side, that patient might develop the ATT induced hepatotoxicity. So it is very important we should have a tissue diagnosis. Look at here, this is the scope, this is the esophageal wall, this is the mediastinum, this is the heart. So under real time, you are puncturing the mediastinal node. You know this is the heart, you can't take the needle deep. So this is a 10 minutes procedure, you can take the FNAC, you can take the histology, because now the treatment is so personalized. The treatment will depend upon the immunohistochemical staining. So for that you require a tissue. Earlier we were able to give the FNAC, but now we can give the histological core and even for the lymphoma, you can do the molecular profiling and the immunohistochemistry. Now look at here, the lymph node of 5 mm. So any lymph node which is 5 mm to any size, you can target with the help of endoscopic ultrasound. And the most important thing in our country, when you are dealing with the malignancy, when you do a PET scan, you find a lymph node. It is not possible to target the lymph node with the help of CT scan or with the PET scan. Either you do a mediastinoscopy or thoracoscopy, which is a more invasive, more costly, required general anesthesia. Here you do endoscopic ultrasound, 10 to 15 minutes, you take FNAC, you send to cytopathology. Within one hour, she can tell, are you dealing with the reactive lymph node? Are you dealing with the tubercular lymph node? Are you dealing with the metastatic node? And that is going to change. And at least one in a month patient comes to us with the report a pancreatic malignancy with the lymph node and on the basis of fat it is an unoperable tumor but when you sample the lymph node it turns out to be tuberculosis so pet positive lymph node doesn't mean you are dealing with the metastatic node it may be an inflammatory node require a tissue diagnosis because an unoperable tumor you can make it operable and this happens at least once in a month so it is important mediastinal lymph node is very important other indication Staging of the esophageal gastric malignancy, large gastric folds, some mucosal tumor I have spoken. Now, this is altogether a separate topic of one liner endoscopic ultrasound in the portal hypertension. We can measure the portal pressure laser, we can measure the HVPG, we can measure the shear wave elastography, we can do the therapy of the gastric viruses. So, for liver disease, in the near future, it will be a one chop chopping. A patient comes to us, you do an endoscopy, you look at the viruses, you want to measure the HVPG, you just put a 25 gauge needle with a manometer over it, it gives as accurate as a HVPG that invasively. You can take the liver biopsy in a patient of NASH or liver disease, you can do the shear wave elastography. So patient with the one scope, you can do at least five things. You don't require to send the patient to the radiology, to the ultrasound, to your place. On one table with one scope, you can do the entire spectrum of liver disease patients. That is an advantage. The most important indication is CBD stone. Again, the one-liner, the era has gone when the suspected CBD stone goes for ERCP. If you have documented the CBD stone, ERCP is the standard of care. But if you have not documented, then you are only left with either MRCP or EUS. It will depend what facilities is available in your place. If MRI is available, yes, MRI is good. But MRI score, 
not over EUS, EUS score over MRI. Why? Because number one, a six, less than six millimeter stone, which is culprit for the biliary pancreatitis, the MRI accuracy goes down to 55%. And stone impacted in the ampulla, where there is a flu, and MRI has a poor resolution for the ampulla. So ampulla is stuck up stone, stone less than six millimeter, MRI, MRI, MRCP has a poor specificity in those cases EUS score. But if you don't have any EUS, I agree, don't subject the patient for ERCP, risk of pancreatitis, risk of perforation, risk of bleeding, it is better to do MRI. Pancreatobiliary malignancy, again, it is a one shot shopping. How come? It, it diagnoses small tumor, less than one centimeter cannot be picked up, EUS can pick up five millimeter tumor. If tumor is there, you can stage the disease because for the portal vein invasion, EUS is superior to the dynamic CT. If you require a tissue diagnosis, you can do on the same CT. If patient has a biliary blockage, you can do the biliary drainage. If patient has a pain, you can do the celiac plexus block. So same as I talk about the liver, for pancreatobiliary malignancy, again endoscopic ultrasound is a one-stop shop. You can do everything right from diagnosis, staging, tissue diagnosis, celiac block, biliary drainage, everything is possible. Diagnosis of the recurrent pancreatitis for microlithiasis or for early chronic pancreatitis endoscopic ultrasound, cystic lesion of the pancreas, I don't think any modality can say what are you dealing with. EUS has an advantage both morphologically as well as by taking the fluid for aspiration, sending for the biochemical test, sending for the histopathology, EUS score or other modality. The drainage of the pseudocyst, I think it is no more used by the surgeon. Endoscopic ultrasound is the treatment of choice for the pseudocyst drainage. A patient of cancer who has a pain, the celiac plexus neurolysis is possible. I think pancreatic fluid collection, now it has taken from the surgeon hand, 80% of the pancreatic fluid collection is taken up by the gastroenterologist. Obstructive duct drainage where the ERCP fail, we can do the drainage of the bile duct, celiac plexus, neurolysis, and fluidation implantation. So this is an example, look at here, within five minutes, earlier these patients go for a nasocectomy, but we put a covered metal stand, which is a diameter of 16 millimeter to two centimeter, and it takes five minutes, look at the pus is draining from the world of pancreatic necrosis. Earlier, these patients go for a large incision with a percutaneous drain, hanging drains, patient has a pancreatic percutaneous fistula. Here you do an internal drainage and the most important advantage is not only you drain. I'm not going to the detail, this is a separate topic, but 65% of the patient improve with the drainage only. Those 35% of the patient who still has fever, what can you do? You can do the necrosectomy. You can go inside the stent to the retroperitoneum and you can remove all the necrotic material from the pancreatic bed as the surgical colleague is doing. So you can do the drainage, you can do the necrosectomy, all dead pancreatic tissue can be taken up with the help of uh, endoscopy. So this is the retroperitoneum, this is the part of the pancreas, this is the dead pancreas which we remove using various accessories. Now this is another very good advantage of endoscopic ultrasound. This is called as EUS guided gastrogygnostomy. The concept has come. Now you know that we have got a very much advancement in the chemoradiotherapy. Patient life expectancy has gone up in the patient of cancer. So patient who has a gastric outlet obstruction, when you put an enteral stent, these stents get blocked and patient comes again and again. That's number one. Number second, gastric emptying is poor in these patients. Even after putting the stand, these patients keep on complaining they have a nausea vomiting. What we do is, we do the gastro -jejunostomy. We fill the water into the jejunum from the stomach. We put a fully covered lumen opposing stand and we create an artificial place from stomach to the jejunum. Earlier, the laparoscopic surgeon used to do, but now, we do endoscopically and look at here. This is and this is the part of the jejunum. Can you see this is the jejunum? So you are creating a new path. 
And the advantage is there is no tumor in growth. If a patient has a benign gastric outlet obstruction, I do agree. Uh, we don't have a literature to say that EUS guided is superior, but there is a possibility that time will come. But in malignant biliary obstruction, where there is a gastric outlet obstruction, you put an enteral stent, patient again comes with the blockage of the stent. But if you do a gastrogenosomy, this is a normal mucosa to normal mucosa you have created. And here the food will go with the gravity also. So the gastric emptying is better these patients. So patient with the gastric outlet obstruction, gastrogenosomy is possible. Another important indication, look at here, the gallbladder. Patient who is in the ICU, who has a egg calculus cholecystitis, or patient has a cardiac disease or the kidney disease, who cannot go for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy? You can do the EUS guided drainage of these, this. And what we have done is EUS guided gallbladder drainage. So this is the, we have dilated and you can put the fully covered stem. So this is an advantage now, the gallbladder drainage is also possible. But I'm, that doesn't rule out you cannot do the polycystectomy. That is a standard of care. But those patients who is not fit for surgery has a calculus cholecystitis or a cirrhotic patient who has a cholecystitis, you cannot subject these patients for surgery. You can do the EUS guided gallbladder drainage. This is an example of <coughs> patient with the gastric outlet obstruction. So patient of CA pancreas come with the obstructive jaundice. I was doing ERCP. I find the scope cannot go. I just change my scope from ERCP to US and you do the puncture of the bile duct and you put a fully covered stent. So on the same table, same sedation, same performer, just changing the scope from ERCP to EUS. Otherwise you have to call your doctor who is a radiologist and you have to call him and he has to do the biliary drainage. But here, just look at within five minutes, you can do the EUS guided biliary drainage. I think that is another advancement which has happened. Celiac plexus neurolysis, as I talk, patient of the upper GI malignancy who has an intractable pain and patient is not improving with the medical therapy. You look at, this is an aorta, this is a celiac artery. And what the radiologist will leave, they also do the same site per cutaneous just near the celiac artery. Here, under guidance, we puncture the absolute alcohol. So what the earlier radiologist colleague was doing under fluoroscopically, blindly thinking that at the T12 vertebra, the celiac artery is going to arise. And they try to puncture blindly the alcohol. But now, under reason, we can inject and patient of upper GI malignancy, especially the pancreatic cancer, who has an intractable pain, we can do the celiac plexus neurolysis. So this is a very good advancement. I think this is a must require armamentarium in endoscopy. Because whenever you do endoscopy, patient might have a perforation. And if the perforation happens, you rush to the surgeon. But I think with the help of OVSCO clip, a large bleeder, a large perforation can very well. Look at this is a patient who came to me with a neuroendocrine tumor of the first part of the tumor. I did the removal of the neuroendocrine tumor and after the removal I find there is a gap. I just changed my scope, put an OVSCO clip and within 10 seconds you close the gap. You don't require the patient to do a laparotomy. A 2 cm up to 2 cm gap into the first and second part of the duodenum. Even while doing endoscopy, I was talking to my colleague now today. Sometimes it happens with us and it happens with him also. There was a perforation just by using the OVSCO clip and he has immediately closed it. And look at the complete defect is closed. And my colleague has done it in his department. So you don't require to rush to the surgery. And these patients, sometimes they are cancer patients they cannot handle the surgery and ultimately patient dies. So the most important advantage is on endoscopic table you can treat the perforation also. The pediatric procedure again, pediatric procedure just to highlight, we have endoscopic procedure which is useful for obesity. The most important thing is, it is not for the BMI of more than 40, 
anybody who has a BMI of 26 to 35 can very well be taken with the bariatric procedure and this is very good for control of diabetes. I am not going into the detail of everything but what is available is a balloon, gastric balloons are available and the gastroplasty techniques are available with us. So we can do the endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty and we can put a balloon which is going to help to reduce the weight. These are the duodenal bypass liner, magnets, duodenal resurfacing. I am not going into the detail as I said every topic has its own lecture. But this is mainly for the metabolic control. A patient who is obese and a diabetic, if you do the duodenal procedure, it is going to control the diabetes, it is going to control the weight and it is primarily to control the weight and byproduct of the weight reduction patient as a control of the diabetes. Third space endoscopy. This is very good. I think you all should know. We have gone to the third space. And what is third space? First of all, you should know. The first space is within the lumen, which we are doing from the last 40 years. Second space is the peritoneum. And third space is within the wall, the submucosa. So we can do achalasia cardia. We can do the myotomy. Patient of the subepithelial tumor. I told you. There is a subepithelial tumor with a normal mucosa. It may be a lipoma, it may be a leomyoma, it may be a gist. So once you know it is a gist, this requires treatment. So with the help of STAR or the poet, we can remove it. Patient of the gastroparesis, Jenkins, diverticulum, esophageal structure, everything can be tackled. So this is a small video of the, of the achalasia cardia which your colleague is doing upstairs. I am very sure he must have finished the procedure. So just to highlight that we create a blab, I told you, this is a blab creation, then we give a incision over it. So what we do is once you create a blab, then we give an incision and we go into the submucosa. So this we have entered to the submucosa, this we have gone to the submucosa, this is the tunnel has been created. This is we have reached to the G junction. In the poem, we go at least 2 cm below the G junction. And once we go below the G junction, the blood vessel which come, we have a hemostatic co-grasper. As the surgeon has a co-grasper, we also has. So this is the large blood vessel, we did the hemostasis. You see, such a large blood vessel, we did a co-grasping. Then we started doing the myotomy. What the surgeons do in the poem procedure, we are doing the endoscopic myotomy. Now everybody must be thinking there is a possibility of mediastinitis, there is a possibility of peritonitis. But the concept is the site which you have closed, the site which you have opened, if you close that site, there is no gut contamination. So what we do, once we do the myotomy, the puncture site, the, the, the place where we have done the perforation to the submucosal space, now we are closing with the clips. So this is the concept of hard space endoscopy. You give a puncture, you cut here, you go into the submucosal tunnel, you do the procedure here and you close this defect again. So no contamination of the mediastinum or the peritoneum to the gut lumen, there is no risk of mediastinitis or there is no risk of peritonitis. So this we have done two procedures today and two procedures is going to be performed tomorrow. So this is again important thing if you look at this video I have taken from the net. This is a patient of the STAR procedure. What is the STAR procedure? Here the tumor into the submucosal space we take it out. So what we are doing look at here same tunneling is produced. We produce the tunnel, we go inside. Can you look at the tumor? This is the tumor here, large white tumor. Can you see it here? So you create a tunnel and you take out the tumor outside and the, from where you have entered, you again close with the clip. So any submucosal tumor, I'm not saying all, like lipoma doesn't require treatment, leomyoma doesn't require treatment, but if it is a just tumor, it has a chances of metastasis that so you have to remove. So this is the advantage and the part which has come out, you have to close it. So by applying the, now we have got the Apollo endoswitch. 
If you have got a defect more than 2 cm, 3 cm, with the Apollo end of we can do the switching. So this is an advantage of this. The last slide, I think, the ESD. It is important, but I was talking about the early resection of the T1 cancer endoscopically, either in the esophagus or the stomach of the rectum. So look at here, this is the entire is a tumor. And with the high magnification endoscopy, we have confirmed that it has no deep invasion. Earlier patients go for a large surgery. And within two hours, we remove the entire tumor. You see, this is the device. We are cutting at least five millimeter outside the tumor. And within two hours time, look at here. You see, can you see the entire tumor has removed? So you don't require to send this patient for surgery. The, to, this is a complete chain. First you diagnose. Yes, this is doable. And once you know it is doable, then you can remove endoscopically. So there's a lot of advancement has come up in endoscopy. And uh, last one more is important, I think is very important. So this is called as FDRD device. So those patients who has a T2 disease, which has gone to the muscles propria, or patient like I was talking, dear Dudenum, there's a neuroendocrine tumor, and I was removing, there's a perforation happen. So the more secure way is full thickness device. This is again a new instrument. And what you do? First you do the endoscopic ultrasound, and you have proven that it is limited to the muscles propria, you do a full thickness device. And what you do in the full thickness device? There is a cirrhosa to cirrhosa, you suck inside, you apply the clip and then you cut. So first you apply a clip from cirrhosa to cirrhosa and over it the lesion is cut. So earlier we cut and we create a defect and then we close. Here we first close and then cut over it. So this is the cut which you taken out the sample outside and look at here, this is. Can you see? It was same as the Ovesco clip and the same company. The concept is little different. If you have done the perforation, you apply Ovesco clip. Here, you apply first Ovesco clip, which covers cirrhosa to cirrhosa, and over it you cut the lesion. So there is no risk of even peritoneal contamination. Or patient who has a T2 disease, because of comorbidity, they cannot go. Or patient who has an earlier polypectomy, there is a recurrence of polyp and you cannot do in these patients, you can treat it. I think intragastric balloon, a word about spreads balloon, this is the advantage, it has a recurring, you can start with a 300 ml water, 500 ml water and the 1 liter. The advantage is, it will depend upon the tolerance of patient. So these balloons are used for decreasing the weight. So anybody who has a BMI of 32 to 35, you want to reduce 10% of the excess body weight. Meaning that if somebody has 100 kg, you want to bring him to 85. The intragastric balloon, in season less, with the help of endoscope, it goes in the stomach. And it has an advantage, both hormonal as well as mechanical, and you do it. Swallowable balloon are there, but they are not that effective, I think, going to take time. Reflux disease is also going, coming the boom, I'm not going to take time, I think. But this is the Gurdex, which we can do it. This is the Gurdex device. And what the surgeons do in the Gurdex device, we do a full thickness suturing at the G junction. What the surgeons do in the knees and spine duplication, we do the same thing with the help of endoscopy. And look at here, we are applying. This is the one, this is the two. And once you apply the clip and you look at the G junction, you have created a very good wrap. So patients, endoscopically patient of reflux disease can be taken up. This is a new procedure, ARMA. Again, what you do in ARMA, you do a submucosal resection along the greater curvature. And the advantage is, once you do a resection, there's a fibrosis. And because of the fibrosis, there's an angle production, and that helps in preventing the uh, reflux disease. So I think this is all about which I want to talk. Any question, I will be happy to answer. Less time difficult to cover more topic so i have talked to you in a very brief